Welcome into the January 11th edition of the Locked On Leafs podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Morissuti. Lots of news coming out of Leafs camp today. A couple of key injuries of note that we got to talk about. And uh, the Preds roll into town with uh, being on a four-game winning streak, Dave. So Toronto looking to be the streak stoppers once again here today. So we'll tee that game up for you and get to all the news on today's edition of the Locked On Leafs. Your Locked On Maple Leafs, your daily podcast on the Toronto Maple Leafs. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello and welcome into the Locked On Leafs podcast, one-stop shop for all things Leafs. I'm your host, Mike DiStefano from TSN 1050 Toronto Radio, also known as Al's brother on TSN's Overdrive and TSN 1050's Leafs Lunch. Joining me, it's my co-host, Dave Morris, studio from Sportsnet, also a writer for the NHLPA. Locked On Leafs is a daily Maple Leaf-centric podcast, so be sure to subscribe for free. Wherever you get your podcasts from, you can also now catch us up on uh, video format. Just look us up. Locked on Leafs on YouTube. Hit subscribe. We do new content each and every day, Monday through Friday. Uh, It's all Leafs all the time. If you consider yourself part of Leafs Nation, got to be part of the Locked on Leaf family. Uh, we got a Discord as well. You can go and join. Things are always popping off in there. We'll put the link down below um, on YouTube, also in uh, the podcast if you are listening to the pod uh what's going on dave what's uh what, how you doing pal we never really start by talking about ourselves but how you doing how am i doing well um it's been a interesting few days and in i mean like we haven't it's not long like usual that like the leafs have this back to back they're off until the wednesday like, yeah. it's kind of thrown the whole my whole routine into flux let's just say yeah, because it's typically like game day, off day, game day, off day, game day, off day. And then we had like two shows in a row where it was like, oh, we had a couple off days. We got to do a mailbag. If you missed that uh, podcast, we had a couple of uh, mailbag questions from listeners. So if you asked a question and you missed it, uh, potentially it was on yesterday's show. So make sure that you go and check that out. But we've got a couple that were left over that we didn't get to that uh, we'll, we'll probably get to at the end of this podcast as well. But before we get into any Leaf stuff, Dave, I just, like, there's nothing that makes you feel more more manly, I guess I could say, and gets the testosterone and the juices flowing, like, doing a household chore that requires power tools. You and power tools is kind of a, I don't know how to feel about that. But I'm not, I am not not a power tools kind of guy. The last thing, last line of work I possibly could have went into was carpentry. I'm telling you that right now, but this TV that's on my, above my shoulder, I put that bad boy up today and I felt so good about it. I was walking around strutting like I was Vince McMahon. I was so stoked about putting that bad boy up because I just, I, I am not, I am the least, least likely person to do any type of like home renovation, anything. Like I probably would call somebody to come put up a picture frame. I'm that useless when it comes to stuff, but I put that bad boy up there. I had to get the bracket on and then I got the TV on the bracket. We're feeling good. It hasn't fallen off yet, but uh, let me tell you, man, I am feeling tremendous right now after doing that kind of task tremendous you're making me feel bad because like i'm i'm someone who does who's i come from a family of like carpenters my grandfather was a carpenter so like you know that Tavares photo uh, yeah here's the frame that's not in the office anymore the reason why it's not in the office anymore because i couldn't stand not looking the fact that i haven't put it up yet and like i'm like planning i i'm i'm a planner i can't just put it up and then be like ah oh, no it doesn't work there and then take it down because i don't want to have to like have a bunch of holes in my wall no i got tons of holes back there but the I good thing is that- ask, how many how many holes do we have in uh behind that uh tv there i don't even want my phone I, I i i took a photo of the so the thing is i tried to put the bracket up all right i'm gonna tell people the truth 
I try I got this TV and bracket set on Black Friday, okay? And it's been until today until I put this back up. I tried to do it ahead of my vacation, like before I left for my cruise and then Christmas and all that. I didn't spend a whole lot of time here, so I never really had a chance to put it up, I guess, since uh, since I've been back into Toronto until today. But the day that I tried to do this, like prior to my cruise, early December, let's say, I butchered my wall. Like, I don't know if you could see this very well. I'm going to up the brightness and maybe you could see the photos. Um, but there are many holes, <laughs> many holes that were put in the wall before I finally was able to, to figure oh, it out. Well. Yeah, ex exactly. So there are like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine holes. Hopefully my landlord's not watching the stream and listening to the podcast. Sorry, so Mike, not, on that one. I got yeah, he would not be pleased with, with the way that I butchered this wall here. I'm going to have to go and get some, uh, you know, some filler and fill it in and, and sand her up. Dave, maybe that's something that you could do. You said that you come from a, a, a line of carpentry. Maybe you can help me fill that wall in there at some point. Well, I got, uh, dude, I got a tub of drywall compound. We got this. Oh, that's what I'm talking about, Dave. That's what I'm talking about. My teammate on and off the pod. That's right. That's right. All right. Let's get to some Leafs talk. I'm sure people don't care about uh, me feeling myself after – putting up a TV because others are like big whoop guy. I do more than that on a daily basis at work. People work in factories and carpenters for a living. But anyways, um, some big news actually in Leafs land today, two big nuggets. I suppose we can get to from an injury perspective. Uh, first, we found out that TJ Brody was placed on injured reserve. Uh, he's so he'll be out for at least a week from Sunday. So he'll miss the next three games for Toronto here, so Wednesday, and then uh, when's the next game? Wednesday, Friday, Sunday, or Wednesday, Friday? The, the next three games he's out for. Um, and they bring up Bobby McMahon in his place to take the spot on the roster. He's a forward who's been doing some pretty good things with the Marlies. We can get into that in, uh, in a couple of moments. But the other piece of news that maybe we should start with, because I think it's slightly more – well, you, you tell me which is more pressing – the fact that Austin Matthews was not at practice today, Sheldon Keefe called it a maintenance day. I don't know about you, but it's not too often that we see guys get maintenance days after a scheduled day off. And after practice, obviously Sheldon Keefe with that was asked about it, and he said, yeah, it's a maintenance day for Austin. Whether he plays tomorrow night, we'll see. We'll ask him how he's feeling, so we'll see. Clearly, it's not a traditional maintenance day. Uh, I think he's he's dealing with something here. Um, hopefully, it's not anything that is going to cost him games long term. Uh, clearly, that th that would be the worst case scenario for the Toronto Maple Leafs would be to to lose Austin Matthews for a, a long while, but uh, not a guarantee to play in this game tonight against the National Predators. Yeah, it's it. When when they talk about maintenance days, like Austin Matthews has had many maintenance days throughout the last few seasons, especially when he was dealing with the wrist injury. Um, but Sheldon Keefe also said that TJ Brody's injury wasn't like wasn't a huge concern, and now he's on IR. Like Sheldon, you've now you've now made us question everything you say when it comes to injuries. Yeah, so here's what I'll say about the TJ Brody injury. I read it a little differently. I, I don't like. I, I think I would. Ag I don't know. If agree is the right word, but like I, I, I think that Sheldon Keith isn't lying or stretching the truth. That I don't think that he's. You know, I. For me, I think TJ Brody. He's got a rib injury. They're calling it. Um, I think it's something that he could play through. Usually, okay. maybe he would play through it. But when you look at how well the Leafs have played defensively, I think they could afford to have him get a little bit rested up and try and get back to, to full health or as close to full health as someone's going to get at the midway point in the season. Um, but you look at the team's record with TJ Brody out of the lineup. They're 10-0-3 while he missed time earlier this season. Not to say that they're going to go 10-0-3 again, but – it's it, it really kind of just showed that this team can band together and when it's a next man up mentality, they can succeed. And I wonder if that 
really had something to do with them actually just placing TJ Brody on IR and, and allowing him to give him that week to get rested up. Not necessarily because he can't play through it, but because I think they realize, hey, not only do we have a guy in Connor Timmons who we want to get some action, but this probably, you know, could be good for TJ Brody too to, uh, you know, save some tread on those tires for the back half of the year. That's fair. That's fair. I'm like, I'm not saying Sheldon Gave is a seed, but hockey coaches tend to not want to make a big deal about an injury just because they don't want. They, they're they're very secretive about that stuff. We know that, you know, it's always the famous thing in hockey. Oh, he has a upper body. He has a lower body. Other sports, you get a little more clarity on what the guy has, yeah. right? So that's why I'm always skeptical when a coach is giving updates and stuff. But, yeah, when it comes to Austin Matthews, like, amazing. That, that one a little more, that one, that one I am a little bit more skeptical on. Yeah. For some reason. Like, I know that it was Brody that ended up on IR, but it's the Matthews one. And, and I think it's just based on how weird it is that he's being, that he's being given a quote unquote maintenance day the day after a scheduled off day. Like yeah. that's where it, it, it really kind of makes you turn your head a little bit and, and think what's going on here. Like something, something doesn't add up. Yeah. And like we, we know players deal with things all season long and, there's players who have like have maintenance days, but yeah, when it comes after you already had an off day. Now look, they did play it back to back, so one off day, an off day is nice. Maybe they just felt another off day was gonna be was gonna work for them. So you know, we're recording this before we know for sure what the lamp's gonna look like. Right. You know, Matthews could be there at the morning skate, and all is good in the world. It's just you know, there's yeah, it's definitely. Definitely weird when you consider all the factors that come into hand here. Did you find it interesting at all that uh, so Bobby McMahon was the player who was called up? I know he's a forward, uh, but he was the one who called up in place of TJ Brody's roster spot. And I, it's because they already have seven defensemen, so they don't need an extra D man. Bringing up an extra forward, I think, is is probably smart. But also the fact that they needed an extra body because Austin Matthews is getting the day off. But I found it interesting that Bobby McMahon wasn't um, the placeholder for Austin Matthews during line rushes in practice. Typically, that's what you'll see is, you know, if a guy's just having a maintenance day, whoever the quote unquote 13th or 14th board is, typically will just be a placeholder um, in, in practice so that those guys who are going to be playing together can get those practice, you know, shifts together. Um, wasn't necessarily the case in this game in practice today, though. Pierre Engvall was up on the top line during practice, and Bobby McMahon was on the third line. Um, so I don't know if I'm reading into that as maybe they are considering if Matthews isn't good to go, that Engvall will get the opportunity to move up in the lineup and play on that top line, um, potentially. I don't know. We'll we'll see what ends up happening there. But that was something that I thought was rather interesting. Yeah, because at first we thought that Bobby McMahon was being played in that position because, like, oh, he's just going to come in for for Dryden Hunt here, and he's going to actually get into a game because they're rewarding a player who's done exceptionally well for the Marlies. If you follow the Marlies, Bobby McMahon has done very well, not just this year so far, but last year as well. So, that's what I initially thought, and then you see the lineup changes, and you're just like, hmm, okay. Like, it's a little curious because, yeah, even the seventh defenseman who up and play forward in that case with Austin Matthews being out. Like, they don't – at that point, you just have a body there. But I guess maybe there – maybe there is a potential thing where they're like, ah, maybe he might not play, so we better have a planned out for what it will our lineup will look like without him there, which yeah. – it's really interesting. Well, what it looked like today in practice um, was bunting. Actually, I can, I could, uh, I'll, I'll screen share it so that those watching on YouTube can, uh, can see what we're looking at here. Um, yeah, so here it is, right here. We got uh, David Alter with his practice lines. Although there was a mistake here, actually, but this is what they look like: bunting with Nylander and Engvall. So Nylander actually moved into the middle. Um, with Engvall moving to the right. Yarncroft, Tavares, and Marner sticking together. 
Uh, this was so Kerf Camp and he had McMahon, but then later said actually Hunt was in this spot. McMahon was on the fourth line. So it's actually Kerfoot, Camp, and Hunt. And then Aston Reese, Holmberg, and Bobby McMahon were on the fourth. And then uh, with TJ Brody out, it's Riley and Hall being united here as a duo. Geo and Timmins, and then Sandy and Lilligren stick it together. Um, so Geo or uh, Riley and Hall being, I mean, with um, what's his face out, uh, with with Mer- uh, TJ Brody out, it's Riley and Hall being put together, and they're breaking up Geo and, and Justin Hall, which is kind of interesting too. It also just takes away from what I said yesterday about how we could get Karn Timmons into the lineup and maybe Justin Hall were to come out. Yeah, Justin Hall being moved to play with Morgan Rowley doesn't really make it seem like he's coming out of the lineup in any case, shape, or form. Yeah, no, I I, I believe I push back on that notion. Um, and, and, yeah, I, I, I they like him, man. They like him. And, you know, the metrics are, have been really good for Justin Hall this season. And clearly, they feel like he's a player that they can play up and down the lineup as much as uh, as much as they can. And you know, now he's going to be thrusted into a, a top pair type of role. All right. Um, well, let's take a quick break. When we get back, we can tee up tonight's game, leave some preds at down at Scotia Bank Arena, and then uh, we'll also have a couple last mailbag questions that we can get to that we didn't finish in yesterday's show. But before we get into all that. Let me tell you about betonline.net. It's your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from college basketball to the NHL to the NBA. We've got it all at betonline.net. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting info. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline, it's where the game starts. Welcome back into the Locked On Lease podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Morsuti. Uh, we're your hosts here at the Locked On Lease podcast, a daily podcast. And if you enjoy what you've heard so far, um, please do us a favor if you could and subscribe if you're on YouTube. And uh, also subscribe if you're listening via audio podcast as well. Maybe leave a little five-star review and write a comment down below. We're starting to... We're starting to get antsy about trade talk, Dave. And I'm curious as to what everybody's number one trade target would be, whether if it's a specific player or if it's a position that they want to get filled. I want comments down below. Let us know what is your trade target as of now for the Toronto Maple Leafs. So write that down in the comments down below. You can also reach out to us on Twitter at Mickey underscore Canuck and at D underscore Morissuti. All right, Dave, we got a game tonight. Maple Leafs hosting the Nashville Predators, who are coming in on a surge. They've won four in a row here and, you know, making a little play for the playoffs, which I, 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 I it's weird, man. Like, the Nashville Predators have always been a good team, but not a great team. Mm-hmm. You know, like, I mean, they're, they're actually great. Like, late 2000s, they were always, like, a solid, solid group. Um, but in the last little bit, they've kind of just been, yeah, you know, they probably will make the playoffs, but not do a whole lot once they're there. They're struggling right now on the outside looking in, um, coming into tonight's game though, on a four game winning streak, but on the year 19, 14 and six, a five sixty four save percentage. And one of the more curious, I guess, uh, statistics about this team is their goal differential. Minus four goal differential on the year. And that's with having one of the best goaltenders in the NHL. What does that tell me, Dave? That tells me that this team can't put the puck in the back of the net. That is their biggest hurdle. They have not been able to score. There's just not a whole lot of goal scorers on that team. And when you look and you see, okay, well, where do they sit amongst teams when it comes to goal scoring? They sit in the bottom six. Bottom, uh, yeah, bottom six. So they are, that would make them what, 26th in the NHL in goal scored at 111 on the year. So, you know, it's a team that really just has not been able to get a whole lot of offense, uh, which, which is nice for, uh, for the Maple Leafs who 
are trying to have their goaltending get back on track and both of them coming off pretty good starts now coming up against uh, an offense that has been struggling despite obviously winning a few games in a row. I think most of that uh, definitely has to do with the fact that, you know, they've got stellar goaltending, um, including a three, nothing win against Ottawa the other night. Uh, But yeah, they've been, uh, they've been real solid on this three game road trip that they're on four game road trip. Actually, it'll be, uh, coming into tomorrow, what are you expecting in this Preds Leafs matchup? Yeah, I don't. You're not really um, bearing the lead too much with the UC Soros. Like that guy has just been unreal. Yeah. Since he, I don't know if you watched that. I don't. I saw the highlights of that game against the Hurricanes, where I had to double check to make sure the math was right. That he oh. made 64 saves on 67 shots. Yes. Um, like it was a ma- it was it, a massacre of chances. In regulation in regulation. That's yeah. I think it was like twenty six shots in the third period alone, which, like, that's that's a whole game's worth for a lot of teams, and and they won that game too. That was like the, the crazy part is that like I think uh, like Nashville, I think Nashville got outshot. In that third period, based on what they had in the whole game in, in total, they had like I think they had twenty four shots in that game. Yeah, Carolina had twenty six shots in the third. That's how crazy. crazy. So, like, what I'm expecting from the Leafs is, you know what, this is a defense that's clearly, you know, they're relying a lot on their goaltender. They're not exactly get you know preventing chances. Like, I'm pretty sure that's something that can easily be said and yeah they don't have that clear-cut top goal score like philip forsberg is like their best guy but you look at it it's like they're getting it's by committee in a lot of ways and they're gonna try to grind you out they're gonna try to we're not gonna be preventing many chances because we saw that it didn't really happen against and, and it's yeah, the, the shutout against Ottawa, I mean, Ottawa's not beating a lot of teams right now, so that's not surprising. And same with Montreal, but they're keeping it close, and the goaltending is doing a lot of it. Yeah, they are uh, fourth in the NHL, in uh, or fourth last, actually. So 28th in the NHL and expected goals against per 60, so that's like a pure defensive metric. So you could say that they're the fourth worst defensive team in the National Hockey League, which is is not really what you expect to see out of the Nashville Predators, but that's been the case this year. They're giving up a lot of scoring chances. You know, they're giving up the fourth most scoring chances per 60 as well. And then, you know, high danger. They're another team that, of course, are in the top half of the league and giving up high danger chances. So um, the reason why they're above 500, like you said, is because they're just getting unbelievable goaltending from uh, from their guy Yusei Soros, who's been absolutely unbelievable. Top. Do you, do you remember T- Tanner Janot was like this fin- like fin- rookie phenomenon? How's he doing this year? He is doing terribly. Like he really? had two goals last year, a nineteen point four shooting percentage. So obviously that's sustainable. He has three goals in thirty nine games. A 4.8 yeah. shooting percentage. He's still hitting everything that moves. Like, that's that's still his MO there. But, yeah, I think, like, last year they, they got some unlikely con- contributions from guys, and he was one of them. Wow. Well, uh, I mean, a- another player – let me let – me, okay, I'm going to quickly look up um, – Look up where where these guys are at because I, I forget the exact point total. But like last year, they had so many players who had like career years or renaissance seasons, and I guess they're probably just assuming they're going to do the exact same thing. I mean, Matt Duchesne had a forty goal season, didn't he last year? Like forty goals and a point per game player, and you know he's got eleven so far through 38, 30 points in thirty eight games. It's not awful by any stretch of the imagination, but it's not you know what. He- he did a year ago. Mikhail Granlin only has four goals this season through 39 games. Philip Forsberg, 16 goals through 39 games. You know, so they're just not getting depth scoring either. Ryan Johansson is back to being, you know, his middling self, I guess, that he had become these last few seasons. Last year, nice little renaissance season. 
this year, eh, kind of going back to being, you know, a middle six type of player. Um, and they're just not getting much out of, out of the youth as well. You know, you mentioned um, Tanner Janot, Cody Glass isn't really being, isn't contributing a whole, whole lot. They obviously gave up on Eli. Like Tolvanen because he wasn't doing anything, um, who actually has a couple of goals since going to Seattle, I might add. But at the end of the day, it's 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 the goaltending. Um, a league high, league best 920 team total save percentage, league best uh, at five on five save percentage as well. So to your point, you know, it's a team that hasn't been great defensively. They're not scoring a lot of goals, but they are getting saves and lots of them. So you know, I guess if you're the Toronto Maple Leafs, what's uh, what's the key to victory to getting pucks past AUC Sorrows tomorrow night or tonight, I guess, by the time everyone's listening to the, this podcast and uh, getting the victory? Kind of getting into those scoring areas, right? Getting into those high danger scoring areas. They've been doing a lot. I mean, you saw what they did against the Flyers. A lot of their goals were coming from, I don't know what the average shot distance was or the distance in terms of what they were scoring, but I would assume that it was pretty close in that like, other than the Lily Grin goal, they didn't have many goals that came from far out. So I think that's that's gonna be an important one there. They gotta watch the physicality. We know that Nashville still has guys that like to be bruisers. And that's gonna be they're gonna try to wear down the Leafs forwards as much as possible with their physical play. And a final one for me here is Roman Yossi. He's the engine that serves the drink. Like him and Philip Forsberg are like the two guys. Like it's almost like when you're playing the Oilers, you pick on Dry Saddle McDavid. Yeah, Forsberg and Yossi are the Dry Saddle McDavid of the Predators, and they don't really have many other guys that are co- are, are, are as you we just mentioned are at that other level that those two are at. Yeah, yeah. I think if you could slow down, you know, Yossi from the back end and Philip Forsberg, there's not a whole lot more offense coming from these guys. Um, I, I guess you know Niederreiter has 12 goals this season, so I guess there there's you know a little bit of secondary scoring, but for the most part, yeah, I think it's 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 Forsberg and it's Yossi, and I think you brought up the best point though at the beginning there when you said. You know, the Maple Leafs have to do a good job of getting into those scoring areas. They got to do a good job of making UC Saros a little uncomfortable. You know, Saros has been extremely successful when it comes to defending or, or, or stopping high danger ch- chances as a team. The Preds, you guessed it, up at the top of the league in high danger save percentage with an 880 save percentage. Uh, Maple Leafs third, by the way, 869. Nice. Um, so, you know, that's that's kind of where things sit right now. They've they got to find a way to get through that goaltending. Um, but they've been the streak stoppers. They've been the streak stoppers all year long. I mean, you had the Devils were coming in on a streak. The couple, you know, earlier this season, the Red Wings were on a streak and they beat them. Uh, Carolina was on a streak. But, like, they've been able to beat teams who have been coming in uh, on a bit of a, a hot run. Vegas, I think they got a victory. So, They've been able to beat these clubs. Can they continue it here tonight against the Nashville Predators? I guess uh, I guess we'll have to see. But I think it'll be a lot more difficult to do also if, in fact, Austin Matthews does not play. We know T.J. Brody won't be as he, he's out for the next week. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the lineup kind of changes uh, if Matthews indeed is out. Do we see Willie in the middle, as was suggested in practice today? It kind of would be interesting to see how, how that would work out, but um, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, I think it'll be a, a fun game regardless, uh, and and the Maple Leafs should be able to come away with a victory. All right, Dave, let's take uh, one more quick break. When we get back, we left some, uh, we left a few mailbag questions out of last pod because I was just going a little too long, so we had to shorten things up, and we said oh, we'll do them a little bit later on in the week. So we'll get to uh, one, maybe two of those questions. On the other side, uh, I'm Mike DiStefano with Dave Morris Studios and the Locked On Leafs Podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Welcome back into the Locked On Leafs Podcast. I'm Mike DiStefano. I got Dave Morris Sudi, my co-host here with me. Uh, all right, Dave. So we did a mailbag sec- uh, segment on yesterday's podcast. I guess the whole podcast was uh, was a mailbag, and if you missed it, we had some good questions from you guys, 
and we answered them to the best of our ability. You can go check out um, most of the questions that were asked on yesterday's show, and there's a few leftovers that we're going to get to uh, right here and right now. So, Dave, why don't you pull up uh, the the first question for us here, and we'll try and we'll try and answer it. Give it a, a solid effort at answering it at the very least. Yeah, before we do, I have to give a Mia Copa. I did the one thing that you never want to do and not ask the Discord to send in their mailbag questions. No, yes. Oh, I so bad. First thing I saw in the Discord uh, this morning was, oh, I missed the mailbag. But that's why you'd never miss a podcast, because we announced it on the podcast on Monday. Hey, we're doing a mailbag tomorrow. Leave the questions in the video below, which means clearly you're not you're not listening to the pod every day. I appreciate you backing me up because I felt that I usually like to give the guys a heads up so they can get their questions in. So I got it better. But yeah, this is also why it's important to subscribe so you don't miss a podcast, even if you can't watch or listen to the full thing description i put important things in that description i take some i take my time to put together a good description for all of you so make sure you guys are keeping an eye on that description so you're not missing out on anything with that being said let's uh let's go back to uh the question we had two left so we'll get we'll finish these ones off the first one here is we we've kind of discussed this but we hadn't really discussed it and that is about will matthew nye's this is from me. Uh, he had a good question in the prior episode, and he actually had two questions. So I wanted to make sure we got both of them. Yeah. Will Matthew Nice play with the Leafs this season and into the playoffs? Um, man. <sighs> yes. I'm, I'm going to say yes right now. Um. Like I think Matthew Nye is like there's there's so much pressure on him to come in and be a very impactful forward right away. I'm not exactly sure if he's going to be that incredibly impactful, and I only say that because you know power forwards, especially when I look around the NHL, not a whole lot of them find success right away, uh, especially when they're coming from the college ranks. Like I think about. Dylan Holloway out in Edmonton who came from the college ranks. It's not having the greatest rookie season. Um, I think we expected a little bit more out of him and some other guys around the NHL. I mean, your Slavkovsky is not having a great rookie season with uh, the Montreal Canadiens. But I, I think when I look at Matthew Nyes, um, so this year so far, he's got 12 goals, 23 points through 22 games with the University of Minnesota. Do I see him being signing with this team when his college season is over? Absolutely. I think he becomes a Maple Leaf. Will he play games with Toronto? Yes, I do. I think he'll play games with Toronto. I don't necessarily know if the playoffs are a surefire guarantee, but if they are, if he's going to play, I, I maybe he doesn't exactly play in the top six, which is what a lot of people are hoping for either. I would just... Temper expectations a little bit on him in his rookie season. Uh, if he ends up coming and playing a physical fourth line role for the playoffs, I think that is that is okay. If they end up finding somebody to be on that in that top six via trade, or if Yarncroft continues to produce at at the point per game pace that he's on, I don't anticipate that. But if it happens, you're not going to mess with a good thing. So, will he play with the Leafs? I believe so. Will he be incredibly impactful? Maybe not as much as people think. Yeah, it's it's tough because the Leafs are like we're we're seeing it now. Whenever that teams are just throwing in young players and hoping that they can actually you know stick and be contributors, and then there's teams that it's almost like they don't really know what they want to do with their young players. And I don't want the Leafs to do that with Matthew Nyes because he can be a very he, he everything you see with him screams this guy can be a good piece for going forward, right? Like he's got the size, he's got the desire to go into the tough areas to score. The last thing you want to do is ruin his confidence, right? And put him in a situation that maybe doesn't work for him. And I think that's where the Leafs feel like, you know. If they if they get, have enough options where 
they say, all right, Matthew, we're going to give you a chance to show what you can do. Let's see if you can help make, like, force us to make a decision about keeping you on this team, you know, past whatever. Try. I, I think I'm certain they're going to give them NHL. If they sign them, they're going to give them some NHL games because that's usually what comes with the perks yeah. of signing that NHL deal. Like, he's not signing and then you're throwing him into the Marlies. That's just not what NCAA, play, NCAA players need to be convinced to leave school, right? So you got to convince them by saying we're going to get those NHL, NHL games under contract for you. I mean, even Nick Abruzzese had a good handful of games when he came out to uh, uh, Harvard last year, and then obviously he, he hasn't even been a factor this season at all, in the, in the regular season at least. Um, and, and he's kind of like a middling player for the Marlies right now too. He's, he's not one of those guys who's tearing it up up at the top of the charts like a Bobby McMahon who's now with the team called up today. Um, so, yeah, we'll see what ends up happening with Matthew Nyes. I think he'll get games, but whether or not he's like that impact power six, uh, top six power forward that the team is eyeballing at the deadline, can he be that kind of their own rental deadline ad? Nah, I'm not sure about that one. Yeah, All it's right. a big wait and see there. All right, yeah. here's the final one here from Ida. Uh, it's – Looking at Kyle Dubas, right? And we, we, I, we, again, this is another thing we kind of discussed a little while ago. So, should the Leafs lock down the contract with Dubas now or risk losing him to another team? Hasn't he already proven himself valuable? If not, how far does the team need to get in the playoffs before he has earned it? Hmm. So, I guess I could answer the first part and then kind of move on in. I guess in like three chunks. Yeah. So there's almost three questions here. Yeah. So should the Leafs lock down the contract with Kyle Dubas now or risk losing him to another team? I I mean, no, they should not lock him down to a contract now, but I don't think that would also put him at risk to losing him. I, I, I think Toronto could, quite frankly, match any offer that is put on his table. And I, I believe that Kyle Dubas has started something here in Toronto. And if, MLSE and the Maple Leafs are willing to bring him back to see through that vision. I think he is more than willing to, to come back. So I don't think you're going to, there's no threat of losing him to another team. In my opinion, it's just whether or not the organization is going to want to go there. If, if there's not success again, in terms of hasn't he proved himself valuable? I think he absolutely has proved himself valuable. I think we've talked about on this podcast a lot, how many great moves that he's done and he's done a lot with a little in terms of, you know, once those big contracts were signed and once the pandemic really hit, it handcuffed him from a cap perspective. And he's been able to, you know, make some really nice deals and make some nice signings like, a you know, a David Camp, a Michael Bunting, um, you know, even Callie Armcrock at 2.1 is looking pretty good right now at that price. You know, last year bringing in Ilya Labushkin for Nick Ritchie. And, um, you know, the goaltending has been pretty good so far this season you know so he's made some nice moves um but i i still think that there needs to be playoff success you can't go six years as a general manager of a hockey team and not have a single single series victory and still be guaranteed a contract in a contract year so you know has he proved himself valuable to an extent um but I guess I can answer the third one there. If not, how far does a team need to get in the playoffs before he's earned it? I mean, you got to at least win one round. The minimum. Minimum one round. If he does not win a round in the playoffs, I don't think he's guaranteed to come back. It's not that he's guaranteed to leave and they're, he's they are guaranteed to not bring him back. But I don't even think that you have those conversations uh, until – the playoffs ultimately because playoff success is what's going to dictate kind of the future of this team. Um, and that includes, you know, Kyle Dubas, Brendan Shanahan, I think is also included in this conversation here, which ultimately will also include Sheldon Keefe. Like those three are very well connected to each other. And then you've got big contracts coming up over the next two off seasons with, uh, you know, Matthews Nylander. And then the following off season, you've got, Marner and uh, and and John Tavares. So, you know, it's it's going to be an interesting next few seasons for Toronto. Uh, 
I believe Dubis, you know, is the right man for the job, and he's done a good job and probably has, you know, deserve deserves a contract. But I understand their willingness or their unwillingness to give it to them to this point. Yeah. Um, in terms of how long, again, at least one, maybe even two playoff rounds to uh, to really say, okay, we need need to bring this guy back to finish the vision because we believe that we are on the right course. We finally got over the hill. Now next year we can bring it across the finish line potentially. Um, so that's probably what it would take to, to get Dubas locked up for me. Yeah, like for me, um, it, there's a couple of things here. I think they're learning a little bit from what happened with the contracts that they gave out. Like I, I looked at the comments from our last video, and of course people are still raving about this John Tavares contract and like yeah. what it has done to the team. I, I still remain that I'm not bothered by the John Tavares contract because in a way he earned it as a free agent. And people are saying, well, it's because of him that they had to pay Matthews Marner more and Nylander a certain amount. But technically, I think there was a couple of other young NHL players that are comparable to Matthews and Marner that pushed the market to dictate the market to pay them that much. But that's a step. Like that, that was like, I don't know what you were expecting Dubas to do there, like to play hardball with the stars. Like, I, I think the, the Leafs understand here that. You know what? Like they can wait because with Dubas because I yeah I don't see another team coming in and saying we're going to give Kyle Dubas a boatload of money, and then the Leafs can turn around and say okay we're going to get a yacht full of money and just laugh at your offer away. Like I'm not worried about that. I'm not worried about Dubas leaving to go for another team because I feel like he he's he's someone that you know wants to see through a project. He always talks yeah. about this as a project, you know. Yeah. What, Go ahead. Well, what other team who would be looking for a new GM would be more attractive than what the Leafs could offer? Yeah, like I'm, I'm like, not I, only money wise, but like the on ice product, the roster. Like, unless Dewis really loves to take on another challenge, and like he grew up in Ontario. So it's not like he's going to go back home somewhere, right? This isn't like a Steve Eisenman thing where he leaves Tampa Bay to go to Detroit. Like there was a reason why Steve Eisenman left Tampa Bay to go to Detroit. You know, he left the team that was a perennial Stanley Cup contender to go to a team that needed a full gut job. I don't like, like, where's Dubas going to go to do that? Like, I, I don't see another team in the immediate horizon, like, me, like, immediate that. Is it Edmonton? I don't know. Like that could be a niche. That could be one. But like, I don't know if he even would want to do that. Like, would you go for Edmonton over Toronto? I'm just speculating. I'm not even saying that's actually a thing. I'm just trying to justify any potential hit, chance of him leaving. Um, but yeah, no, he. I they do need to win. I think two rounds for me, because you can get past round one. Round two is kind of like you're you're on the cusp of getting as far as like you, like at least then like those are two tough rounds you got to get past. That's the thing, like it, it, the way it's it's going to set up. Like we already know this. It's it's January 11th, and we already know how it's setting up. Yeah, but it's going to be Tampa in round one, Boston round two. Those are two very very difficult teams, and you know, losing to them wouldn't, wouldn't be, you know, any other team you can lose to them admirably. The Maple Leafs just can't afford that luxury based on their history. Unfortunately. No, they, they, at this point, nothing is like, I understand players got paid for what they have done individually, but they weren't paid for what the team has done on the ice. I get all that. And that's why I'm putting it not. I don't think for me around isn't. I know that we're bait, We're just clamoring for like we're pleading for one round. I'm gonna be a little greedy and say I need to see two rounds just because it feels like if they win around the second, then they finally get over that that hurdle. There's a mental hurdle there for a lot of these guys, and once they get past the first one, I think the second one will be a little easier. Now, it might not be better and easier in terms of a matchup. We don't know exactly what that matchup will be. 
but I just feel like once you get over the first one, it starts a bit of a chain reaction. But and that's kind of why I think two rounds is where I want to see now. If they win around, will I say that that Duba shouldn't come back? It all depends on how it goes, right? Like how the you know it, how the the what the circumstances are, but. I do want to see a little more than I want to see the team aim a little higher than yeah. Let's get let's do one round. Yeah, well, we'll see what happens. Um, it's it's a long time from now. There's still 41 regular season games to get through, and then uh, then the playoffs hit. So, uh, and one of those games is tonight, game 42 on the year. The second half of the season officially begins tonight. Maple Leafs hosting the Nashville Predators down at Scotia Bank Arena. Should be uh, should be a good one, as always. But that'll do it for us here today on the podcast. I'd like to thank you all for listening and supporting the show. You can subscribe to Locked On These Podcasts on all podcasts and platforms. I receive daily Leafs content. Follow myself on Twitter at Mickey underscore Canuck. Follow Dave at D underscore Morissuti. Go ahead, smash that like button on YouTube. Leave a comment down below as well. Uh, and uh, a review if you're listening on iTunes, a little five star action with a review that'd be kind of neat, wouldn't it, Dave? It would definitely, definitely be neat. Yes, it would be, it would be neato, as uh, as some, some would say. <laughs> All right, we'll be back with another episode tomorrow. We'll break down the leaves and preds, but until then, keep it locked right here on Lockdown Leaves.